Sigma Tiger News all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. What's going on today? Plastic heart attack? Ooh. Soy lesbiana? Worse than Hamas? And asleep at the wheel? <laughs> Welcome to Sigma Tiger News. Go ahead, like, subscribe. 10,000 likes, 10,000 subs, whatever. 10,000 something, the mask is coming off. So we'll figure it out. We'll get the metrics sorted. Anyway, what's going on today? We talked about microplastics being all up and everything in the storms, in the ice, in our blood, in the placenta. Well, guess what? It's now in your clogged arteries. Plastic found inside more than 50% of plaques from clogged arteries. <clears throat> Who would have guessed? Plastics are now everywhere with tiny fragments found in several major organs of the human body, including the placenta. Given how easy the microscopic particles infiltrate our, tissue, infiltrate our tissues, it's vital that we learn exactly what kind of risks they could pose to our health. Researchers have been busy studying the effects of microplastics in many replicas of organs and in mice to get a sense of how they might impact the human body. However, the concentrations of microplastics used in those studies might not reflect people's real-world exposure, and few studies have been done in humans. Now, a small study in Italy has found shards of microplastics in fatty deposits surgically removed from patients who had an operation to open up their clogged arteries and reported their health outcomes nearly three years later. Removing fatty plaques from narrowed arteries in a procedure called a uh, carotid endarterectomy reduces the risks of future strokes. The team behind this new study, led by Rafael Marfala, uh, a medical researcher at the University of Campania in Naples wondered how the risk of a stroke as well as heart attacks and death compared between patients who had microplastics in their plaques and those who did not. Following 257 patients for 34 months, the researchers found nearly 60% of them had measurable amounts of polyethylene in plaques pulled from their fat-thickened arteries, and 12% also had polyvinyl chloride in extracted fat deposits. Polyvinyl chloride, unbelievable, PVC, comes in both a rigid and flexible forms and is used to make water pipes, plastic bottles, flooring, and packaging. Polyethylene is the most commonly produced plastic used for plastic bags, films, and bottles, too. With microplast <coughs> excuse me, microplastics previously found coursing through people's bloodstream, the researchers were reasonably concerned about heart health. Lab-based studies suggest microplastics and uh, trigger Inflammation, oxidative stress in heart cells and impair heart function, alter heart rate and cause scarring in the heart in animals such as mice. Well, there you have it. Uh, we talked about it before. Plastic is obviously terrible. It's leaching from plastic bottles. Everything comes in plastic. And uh, humans didn't do a really good job of making sure that it's stable over time. We do realize that a lot of plastics aren't. If you flip your bottle over and see a little recycling symbol... Uh, the arrows in a triangle with a number inside, you can look that up and it'll tell you whether it's okay to reuse your bottle and uh, what condition it'll be in if you do. So, uh, yeah, suggestion, use metal, like uh, copper, but again, that could be an issue as well. You could get poisoning from that. Uh, but stainless steel or even glass. And they stopped using glass. Why? Well, it costs too much to transport. Plastic's cheaper. Companies are making more money, making us sick. And, uh, well, why don't we recycle glass anymore? Like, what happened to that? Well, it's, again, too expensive to do it. No one's making enough money. So what's good for you is not good for the, uh, the coffers. What do we have next? <clears throat> Spanish soldiers changing gender to female for added benefits. Higher pay. On the inside, soy lesbiana. Spanish soldiers are changing their gender from male to female to earn certain benefits only available to females, including higher pay and better sleeping quarters due to a self-identification law aimed at helping transgender people. So isn't that, uh, you know what I mean, unfair for women to get extra benefits? I thought it was all about equality and inclusion. Well, you know, it used to be unequal, so to make it equal, we're going to give uh, the them more. <clears throat> 41 men in Spain's North Africa autonomous city, uh, Queta, have made the drastic decision to change their gender on official documents from male to female since their so-called Les de Trans or trans law was implemented in March 2023. So just uh, two weeks in and we have 41 soldiers saying, well, you know, thank God for real that 
I can be a woman now and get a better bed and higher pay. <clears throat> of the men who changed their identity, only four have also legally changed their name. A majority of the now female soldiers have kept every other aspect of life, including male genitalia, sexuality, and even facial hair. So it's, it's obviously a piss take. They're taking advantage of the law. On the outside, I feel like a heterosexual man, but on the inside, I am a lesbian. Soy lesbiana. And uh, it is the latter that counts. That is why I made the legal change to become a woman. It's the latter that counts. Yeah, what they feel. Those going through the change are doing so in hopes of promotion and raises, according to the Telegraph, citing military sources. Uh, Perdigones says he was encouraged to change his gender because of positive discrimination and has since received a 15% salary increase. For changing my gender, I've been told that my pension has gone up because women get more to compensate for inequality. I also get 15% more salary for being a mother instead of a father. Oh my God. So guys, like, come on. Is this not like the funniest thing you've ever seen in your life? But that's what's happening. That's why men are entering female sports because they get a major advantage. It literally shows you right there in Spain that 40 odd soldiers said, <clears throat> Yeah, we're women, and uh, one guy was literally like, this is why. Opinion, I'm a climate scientist. If you knew what I know, you'd be terrified too. So here's the alarming uh, Bidwell Bar Bridge backlit by a Oroville, California fire. Are you frightened by climate change? Do you worry about what sort of world we are bequeathing to our children and grandchildren? In the words of science writer and author of The Uninhabitable Earth, David Wallace Wells, no matter how well informed you are, you are surely not alarmed enough. And of course, like they've been ringing the alarm ever since the 1970s. <clears throat> and every single time they said something was going to happen, rivers will dry up. Storms will like overtake the world. Uh, none of it. None of it's happened. I mean, like, you know, ocean levels have risen. There's definitely been some ecosystems that have been affected. Definitely weather seems to be changing. But again, there's a lot of people saying, well, is it cloud seeding? Like they're putting things in the clouds. Are those the plastics that they're putting in the clouds, causing clouds to rain and collect moisture? What's going on up there? Well, it's definitely not chemtrails because they do not exist. It's called cloud seeding. And you'll get fact-checked. Because, no, 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 chemtrails is a conspiracy theory. Those were never confirmed. But uh, <clears throat> cloud seeding is 100% confirmed, and it's happening. And this person's ringing the alarm. Think about that for a moment. We're experiencing in our lifetimes a heating episode that's probably unique in the last 4.6 billion years. And yeah, maybe we're entering an extinction event. Maybe this is it. Maybe this is exactly what, what's been happening. What's happening to our world scares the hell out of me. But if I shout the brutal, unvarnished truth from the rooftops. Will this really galvanize you and others into fighting for the planet and your children's futures? Like, oh my God. Well, maybe we're not in control of it at all. And Mother Nature is saying, uh, you know, it's time for me to uh, eradicate the world of uh, the current pathogens or parasites known as humans because we had to get rid of them before because they were doing a whole bunch of bad stuff. And we're going to do it again. Major psychological study published by the scientific journal Lancet Planetary Health in 2021 found that most 16 to 24 year olds in 10 countries across the globe were moderately to extremely worried about climate change, but more than half felt overwhelmed and powerless to act. It would seem reasonable to argue on the basis that painting an even worse picture wouldn't help. But if this is the case, does not mean we shouldn't provide people with the full facts? They're too scary? Surely not. Yeah, okay, so uh, what are they saying? Plastic's bad, so let's get rid of plastic straws. Let's reintroduce uh, straws with Teflon on them and cause uh, our bodies to be sicker. So what is it? What's more important? Your health current or the potential health of uh, your children when we have no idea what we're doing and the metrics are never agreed upon? 2022 study by research from University of Bath in UK found that scary images, wildfires, and other climate-related catastrophes around the world were particularly effective at cultivating climate anxiety. Yeah, so that's exactly what it is. Join a group of like-minded people and work with them to drive institutional and systemic change. Yeah, that's exactly how uh, it works. And if you can get funding, then uh, good luck because you are going to get it done, likely. So the bottom line is that many things in life are scary or worrying, from going to the dentist to noticing a potential sign of cancer, but ignoring them almost invariably result in something far worse happening down the line. And panicking as well, okay? Because if you say, oh, I got cancer, doctor, oh no, and you go home and you start stressing and stressing, guess what? That cancer is probably going to be exacerbated and get absolutely worse 
your health. You know what I mean? So like panicking is not the problem. Let's just take a step back and look at ways that we can uh, embrace what we're doing instead of sell selling climate uh, carbon credits so more people can pollute more. That does nothing. That's absolute trash. That whole climate scheme and climate tax is a joke. And let's go ahead and, and uh, just tax people and give them a rebate later on if they go ahead and remove their wood stove. We don't know what's going on. There is no consensus. Climate change is likely uh, due to a cyclical thing, and it may or may not be exacerbated by uh, fossil fuels, which is bullshit too. It's actually coal. It's not a fossil fuel. It's not made out of dinosaur bones. Continuing on, female bartender found guilty of a hate crime after confronting trans-identified biological male using women's restroom. Heads up. Uh, Portland, Oregon, female bartender in Oregon has been found guilty of a hate crime and harassment charge for physically confronting and misgendering a trans-identified biological male who had been using the women's restroom. Multnomah County Circuit Court found Cassie McIntyre, 40, guilty on Wednesday of second-degree bias, crime, and harassment following a two-day jury trial. Riz Larson, 35, formerly known as Ronald Larson, is a trans-identified biological male and self-described Marxist who uses pronouns that include she, her, hers, and theirs. McIntyre was accused of misgendering and physically shoving Larson during competition at Smallwood Bar in Portland. Well, crossed the line there with physical altercation. Court documents revealed that McIntyre, a bartender at Selwood Bar, had just finished her shift and was seated having a drink. Suddenly, she heard patrons complaining that Larson had cut in line to use the women's single stall restroom and shoved other customers aside in the process. Okay, well, <clears throat> perhaps she should have been bounced out of the bar. The radical George Soros-funded district attorney... Mike Schmidt assigned Prosecutor Charlie Weiss as the district's bias crimes prosecutor in 2023. Unbelievable. Bias crimes prosecutor. He argued the case on behalf of Multnomah County. Weiss told the jury during closing arguments that Larson is scrutinized in a different way than most of us in our day-to-day -day lives are scrutinized. People sometimes express disagreement not with what she says or what she does, but who she is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. People disagree with a lot of things. Uh, once the jury returns guilty verdict, Judge Christopher Marshall sentenced McIntyre to two years probation and 50 hours community service. According to the post-millennial election, social media accounts revealed far-left ideologies, which doesn't matter, whatever. Larson claims to be a cat girl, a horny doll, bim bosh scholar, polyamorous artist, and a Marxist trans carpentress. Totally healthy. France's appetite for frogs' legs is endangering species in Asia, say campaigners. Well, we all know about the uh, French eating frog legs. Uh, you know, who knew how much? France's hunger for frog legs is destructive to nature and endangering amphibians in Asia and Southeast Europe, a group of scientists and vets have warned. More than 500 experts from research veterinary conservation groups have called on Emmanuel Macron, the French president, to end the overexploitation of frogs and afford the most traded species better protections. So, yeah. <clears throat> More frogs' legs are eaten in France, often fried in a batter or sauté with garlic and parsley, than in any other country in the EU. France should push to secure global protections for these frogs. Uh, yeah, so whatever. Perhaps they should find one that is abundant and eat that one. Maybe they should get on the green crabs. Biden's DEI rules are worse than Hamas. Top microchip makers are postponing U.S. expansion and instead expanding into dangerous Israel and Russia because American grants come with so many equity caveats. So what the heck is going on? So uh, we need chips for AI and computers and cars and all the computer and lovely things that we have. Well, guess what? Uh, they were going to expand to the U.S., start manufacturing there. Hey, that's great. Biden was like, oh, yeah, wonderful. Well, guess what? If you're going to do this, then we're going to need you to uh, be diverse. Okay, you need 30% of this, 25% of that, 10% of this, maybe 5% of that. 5% be white. Make sure you get minimal of those. Those are the minority now, but we won't talk about that. But we're going to make them that. And uh, we also need equality. So everyone needs to get the exact same level of pay. Unless they're a woman, then they should probably get more because they were so uh, on, uh, equal before. So we'll just give them extra to make it equal now. Right? Because that makes sense. And then we're going to include everybody. Except we're going to have certain groups that are just for LGBTQ. And we're going to have certain groups that are just uh, black people. And then uh, we'll, we're going to say my own minority groups and stuff. And uh, anti-colonial. Stuff like that. So we're going to make sure we don't include white people in a lot of this. Make sure they, they don't feel included. But we won't ever label it that. It's DEI, people. 
So Intel and Samsung are going to go ahead and cancel uh, factories in the U.S. because of that nonsense. U.S. Mole's deploying Marine security team to Haiti amid gang crisis. Well, it looks like they were listening to the episode last uh, Friday, and uh, they're going to go ahead and consider deploying elite Marine security. Deteriorating security situation. Uh, yeah, there have been reports of cannibal gangs. Uh, they broke into the penitentiary, released over 4,000 violent criminals, and uh, they're taking over. The president has fled. The person who's in charge now uh, set a curfew, and everyone laughed and said, ha, 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 uh, we're going to do whatever we want because this is outlawed uh, country. 2023, more than 8,400 people in Haiti were reported killed, injured, or kidnapped, more than double the number reported in 2022. The UN estimates that nearly half of Haiti's 11 million people need humanitarian assistance, but 2024 humanitarian appeal for 674 million has received just 17 million, about 2.5% of what's needed. Uh, U.S. Embassy in Haiti urged Americans in the country to depart as soon as possible. Yeah, should have been there in the first place. Gang-related violence and its uh, effects on transportation and infrastructure. Uh, these FAST Marines receive specialized training and non-combat evacuation operations close quarters battle military operations urban terrain convoy operations shipboard operations and specialized security operations teams are part of the yorktown virginia based marine corps security force regiment so they may send these guys in there to help uh get people out but there's no plan to bring forces into haiti so yeah haiti has fallen and it is getting buried prepping for disaster diversifies well more americans lose trust but what are they talking about is prepping DEI now? Well, it seems like it is. Brooke Morgan surveyed booths at the survival and prepper show in Colorado that were stocked with boxes of ammunition, mounds of trauma, medical kits, and every type of knife imaginable. A self-described 30-year-old lesbian from Indiana, Morgan is one of the new breed of Americans getting ready to survive political upheaval and natural catastrophes, a pursuit that, until recently, was largely associated with far-right movements such as white nationalists since the 1980s. So, uh, unbelievable, white nationalists were preppers. Uh, there's a, obviously an error there for the editor to have a look at. Uh, researchers say the number of preppers had doubled in size to about 20 million since 2017. Interesting. Much of that growth is from minorities and people considered left of center politically, whose sense of insecurity was heightened by Donald Trump's 2016 election. <clears throat> COVID-19 pandemic and frequent extreme weather and 2020 racial justice protests, BLM, uh, Antifa, following the murder of George Floyd. I'm really surprised by the number of people of color here. I always went to these shows with my family in Indiana, and it was just white people who weren't my parents' age. There are a lot of young people here, too. It's a real change. Diversification of prepping was clear last weekend at the Survival Prepper Show as Fairgrounds Boulder, Colorado. Liberal District, which President Joe Biden won 2020, nearly 57% points over Trump. Over 2,700 people paid $10 each to attend the show. Bearded white men with closely cropped hair and heavily tattooed arms were there. But so were hippie moms carrying babies in rainbow-colored slings and chatting about canning methods. Latino families looking over greenhouses and water filtration systems <clears throat> and members of the local Mountain View Fire Rescue Team. Anyway, yeah. So, uh, everyone's afraid, is what. And uh, it's probably because of the climate alarmism that CNN was talking about. And uh, Orange Man Bad campaign. Pope Francis says Ukraine should surrender, urges Zelensky to show courage of the white flag. Yeah, so uh, Pope Francis is really doing some interesting things here. He came out and uh, uh, said that one of the most disturbing trends right now is transgenderism, and it's damaging uh, the globe and trying to uh, show that there is no difference between man and woman, uh, blurring the lines between everything. He said that shouldn't be done, and, you know, he is the... Uh, the link to God for Catholicism, so maybe he's on to something. He also says that uh, Volodymyr should probably raise that white flag. He made the remarks during an interview with Swiss broadcaster RSI, transcript which was obtained by Reuters. Amid growing reports, Ukraine, Ukrainian resolve is starting to weaken as the war enters its third year. I think that the strongest one is the one who looks at the situation, thinks about the people, and has the courage of the white flag and negotiates. Maybe he should go ahead and send a letter to Biden and Macron and Trudeau and say, hey guys, like, you know, stop funding this war that is going to just cause more end of life for humans. Uh, one may feel shame, but how many dead will it end up with? Negotiate in time, find a country that can be a mediator. Do not be ashamed of negotiating before things get worse. Today, for example, in the war in Ukraine, there are many who want to mediate. Turkey has offered it itself for this, and others do not be ashamed to negotiate before things get worse. Yeah, raise the white flag. Negotiation is not surrendering. 
Indonesian flight veered off course after both pilots allegedly fell asleep in the cockpit. Well, hey, listen. We've all heard of the co-pilot and the pilot, one taking a nap. I mean, there is beds in planes that do uh, transatlantic flights and intercontinental flights. Uh, yeah. There's been uh, reports of trysts happening with pilots and uh, co-workers in these rooms. Well, guess what? Co-pilot, father to one-month-old twins, admitted to investigators his sleep quality had degraded by several wake-ups from the babies the night before the flight. Mm-hmm. Batik Air Indonesian pilot and his second-in-command are accused of allowing the flight they were operating to veer off course as they both took a snooze in the cockpit mid-flight. Uh, January 25th flight, BTK-6723, was carrying 153 passengers from Halu Alea Airport in Kendari to Sokarno Hatta International Airport in Jakarta, said the report from Indonesia's National Transportation Safety Committee. Both pilots, whose names were not included, had just completed a trip in the opposite direction from Jakarta to Kendari before they made the return, which is when they both fell asleep, the report said. Once the return flight to Jakarta took off and the plane reached cruising altitude of 36,000 feet, 32-year-old pilot asked for permission to take a rest. <clears throat> the report said after the pilot's nap, the pilot asked the 28-year-old second-in-command whether he wanted to rest, but the pilot said he did not want to. After a quick chat, the pilot went back to sleep, leaving the second-in-command in control of the aircraft, according to the report. While the pilot slept, the co-pilot asked to change the flight path to dodge bad weather, the report said, and instructed to check in with flight control when they were clear. But then the co-pilot accidentally fell asleep. <clears throat> Well, it happens. You know what I mean? You could be our... <sighs> you know... Oh. <sighs> Probably like getting ding-donged by the ATC. Uh, you know, excuse me. Can you please pick up the radio? Yeah, so uh, try and get some rest. Thank you for joining the Sigma Tiger today. Uh, wonderful articles. Like, subscribe. Let's get this mask off. Reveal who the real monster is. Sigma Tiger, signing out.